Okay, finish your egg now. Good morning, everybody. Good morning. Why is boy barking in the garage? Okay. Uh-oh. Somebody there in the garage? Hello. Today is Wednesday, August 14. It's a feast day. One saint today. Whose feast day is it today? Maximilian Kobe. Not your Kobe. This is K, what's the spelling? K O L B Y. E. E. <laughs> okay. Anyway, so today is, uh, before I forget, tomorrow is August 15. It's a holiday of obligation. So, as early as today, I'd like to encourage everybody to uh, plan which Mass you would go to tomorrow. Okay? Uh, and for us at St. Joseph's, there are plenty of Masses all throughout the day, including an anticipated Mass uh, tonight. So, in your own parishes, you might want to look for those Masses already so you can plan your day and uh, honor our Blessed Mother on the Feast of Her Assumption. And uh, it's a holiday of obligation, meaning it's an obligation. We, we ought to uh, go to Mass. Okay? It's not an optional thing. Okay, today the Gospel is from St. Matthew, chapter 18, verses 15 to 20. Jesus said to his disciples, If your brother sins against you, go and tell him his fault between you and him alone. If he listens to you, you have won over your brother. If he does not listen, take one or two others along with you so that every fact may be established on the testimony of two or three witnesses. If he refuses to listen to them, tell the church. If he refuses to listen even to the church, then treat him <coughs> as you would a Gentile or a tax collector. Wow. Uh, we often hear a lot about the mercy of Jesus. Mercy, mercy, mercy. Right? We often hear uh, pastors um, uh, preach about mercy. But they forget to preach about confession. As to how to obtain that mercy. We even had a year of mercy. Where we heard plenty of talk about Mercy, but hardly did anybody talk about how to obtain that mercy through confession, and hardly did anybody also talk about the fact that there is hell for those who do not care to listen, for those who did not care to listen to their merciful God, there is hell. And here our Lord is talking about a beautiful practice that really is sorely amiss uh, among Catholics and among uh, communities of the faithful, which is the practice of fraternal correction. This is what our Lord is talking about in this gospel. Fraternal correction. What is fraternal? Where does that word come from? Hmm? Fraternal, not paternal. Fraternal. Huh? Fratres. What is fratres? What does that mean? Huh? Jacob? Brothers. Okay? Fraternal. Fraternity means brotherhood. See? So that's why you have to learn Latin because uh, all of those things are rooted there. Okay? So fraternal correction. We in the church, all baptized Catholics, all the children of God, children of our Father God, belong to the mystical body of Christ. We are one body in the church. We are all brothers and sisters. Some people feel offended by the <laughs> plurality of brotherhood that you include everybody there, mother, male and female, but anyway... In today's politically 
uh, correct language sometimes people get offended with just talking about fraternal right but anyway uh, that's the way it is fraternal correction means that all of us who share one family are all brothers in this in this undertaking in this journey towards heaven we go to heaven as a family we want to bring everybody together uh, to heaven to our heavenly father god and <clears throat> one uh, mechanism if you want to call it that way that we have in the church which our lord encourages us to practice is to care for each other to care for each other to the point of correcting each other when we see that some of our brethren some of our fratres are going astray are not treading along the right path to sanctity we have the obligation to correct them we have the obligation to show them the truth we have to we have to bring them back to the fold we have the obligation to show them good example and we have the obligation moreover to correct them if they are not doing the right thing our lord tells us here very clearly go and tell him his fault if your brother sins against you not only you personally but against the body of the church but against everybody else they one very clear example here um, um, I mean well we'll give the examples later let's explain the concept first okay so go tell him his fault and if he doesn't listen to you on a one-on-one -on -one basis you go get other people to witness to the fault of this person so that he hopefully will listen to the testimony of two or three or more and if he still doesn't listen you elevate it to the higher authority okay? to the higher authority This is a very, very powerful tool of mercy because it is an act of mercy and charity on our part to correct people who are traveling this road to sanctity along with us in this family of the church. So it is a brotherly, a fraternal uh, obligation we cannot turn a blind eye and say, oh, well, let him go to hell. You know? No, that is a lack of charity. That is very bad. Okay? That is very bad. We cannot allow other people just to go by the wayside and fall off and, 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 and you know, uh, let them get lost. Our Lord talks a lot about the lost sheep, right? The lost sheep that they will, that, that they, uh, a, uh, a shepherd will go looking for that lost sheep leaving the 99 behind going after that one in order to bring him back to the fold okay? we have to be good shepherds to others we have to be good shepherds to our other brothers in the church and we can start at home the home is the domestic church the family our own organic family at home is the domestic church we should give good example to others and we should correct the others when we see that they are not doing the right thing now of course how do we do the correction always with plenty of charity charity means love right plenty of charity now charity doesn't mean to say we got to treat them with soft uh, uh with softness all the time okay sometimes sometimes we need to correct emphatically sometimes we need to correct with some kind of urgency okay we don't always need to treat people with kid gloves okay? but with a lot of love if we can choose our language we will choose our language in order to uh, uh, make the correction have a you know uh, not a very hard impact on them uh, okay uh, but at the same time with firmness to uphold the truth and never to try to uh, 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 cloak the truth with some niceties that would uh, somehow mitigate <clears throat> the impact of what we are talking about. 
we have to speak the truth to people. Okay? And Jesus showed us the way, right? You talk to your brother first one-on-one, -on -one, nicely, nicely, charitably, one-on-one. -on -one. If they don't listen, well, get other people to, to testify to that wrong so that they can help in correcting that person. And we can do that at home. Okay? We can do that at home. But still, if they don't listen, you elevate it to those in authority. And at home, the authority will be your parents. So make sure that Papa or Mommy okay, get involved in correcting those who still would not listen. And we got plenty of examples that we can show here, even, even uh, in the church. You know, St. Paul. St. Paul corrected even St. Peter. Okay? Uh, when St. Peter was uh, insisting that everybody be circumcised, well, St. Paul said, no, that's not the right thing. That's not the spirit of, of Jesus Christ. It's not Catholicism. And he, uh, he uh, spoke up and corrected St. Peter. Okay? Our Lord himself practiced this fraternal correction many times all throughout uh, his public life. Right? A few examples that come to mind, for example, was when he corrected Mar uh, Martha. Okay? Very recently, we were, uh, we were recalling Martha and Mary, right? Martha was so busy there preparing things for the apostles and Jesus. And then Jesus says, hey, 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 Martha, Martha, stop complaining. You know, Mary has chosen the better part. Don't take it away from her. That's a correction. Okay? When, when our Lord uh, 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 tells Peter, you see, hey, get behind me, Satan. You are not thinking uh, you're thinking the way human beings think and not the way God thinks. Okay? That's a correction. Okay? And then when, when, uh, when still the stubborn, uh, the stubborn Pharisees uh, wouldn't listen, our Lord became a little bit more aggressive and became more emphatic and told them, you brood of vipers. He even called them names. Okay? Of course, that was already a reprimand more than you know, just, a, just a correction. But sometimes... It goes to that extent because of their stubbornness, right? Because of their uh, incorrigibility. So uh, sometimes it takes that effort, and and we can get we can be misunderstood. We can be misunderstood, but we need to do our part. There is a role we need to play. Okay, this is all part of our being brothers within the church. Okay, for example. Uh, we've been hearing off late bishops, okay, banning uh, politicians from congressmen to senators uh, not to receive communion. Why? <laughs> because they, yeah, because they have been uh, promoting abortion. And they have been told, they have been, uh, the letters have been written to them, they have been, they have been uh, helped, I suppose, in many more ways than one. And yet, when they don't listen, well, okay, then there's the ultimate punishment. You are now not going to be welcome in communion with the church. Okay? And it goes to that extent. Okay? And, well, you know, uh, I just want to, uh, to, um, to remind people, you know, I have been myself uh, ostracized by people in our own parish because of the many things that I had been uh, trying to correct and um, and in fact um, um, I have been uh, accused of uh, using uh, forums that uh, are a little bit too public for comfort <laughs> well uh, for those of you who don't understand and who only came lately uh, I'd like to have you understand that I had gone through these very steps uh, in trying to correct the many wrong things, the many wrong practices that we have been doing uh, with our own parish. I have talked to our pastors. I have talked to people in charge. I have brought things up to the parish council because I was once a member of the parish council and I continue to bring things up to the parish council even before or even after my tenure. And, uh, well, you know, things <laughs> still are not being corrected and we're doing many wrong things. So... Just like what our Lord said here. Well, tell the church. There's got to be a public forum okay, to tell everybody and make, make people understand the wrong things that we are doing. And uh, there has to be a bigger pressure to correct the wrong things we're doing. And we're doing all of this all in the spirit of charity. All in the spirit of love for God. Not because we think we are somebody 
not because we think we know more than everybody else. Right? That is not the spirit of fraternal correction. We are all doing it out of love for the truth, love for our Lord, and love for our brethren in the church. Okay, that's it for us today. So today we celebrate the Feast of Maximilian Kobe, and tomorrow the Feast of Our Lady's Assumption. So it's a very good time as early as today to keep in mind Our Lady's Assumption, the, uh, the beauty of that uh, feast and what it means for each and every one of us so that the whole day today and tomorrow we can celebrate it spiritually, internally, with joy, sharing that, uh, that, uh, the joy of that mystery with Our Lady and Our Lord. Okay, we'll see you folks tomorrow, hopefully. Bye.